welcome to Riverside's Historic Destinations. I am Erin Geddes, the City's Historic Preservation Officer, and today we're going to tour Castillo Isabella, or Benedict Castle as it's also known, constructed from 1921 to 1931. Let's get started on our tour. Today our tour guide is Shirley Stromenchny. She's representing Team Challenge, the current owner of Benedict Castle, and she's going to help guide us on our tour. Hi Shirley. Nice meeting you Erin. Thank you for coming. So tell us a little bit about Mr. Benedict and how he came to have Castillo Isabella. Mr. Benedict came um, to California as a young man and uh, he came with his father and they presided in Riverside for uh, five years and then they returned back to New York. So Riverside was very, very dear to his heart and he came back in 1919 and uh, purchased land. He purchased over 125 acres here with another uh, gentleman from Santa Barbara, Mr. A.M. Green. And uh, the next year they signed over the deed to him and so he was sole owner. Uh, at that point, he had dreams of building a castle because he had toured Europe on the Grand Tour and he fell in love with the Alhambra castles. So this was actually the entrance to the castle originally? This was the original entrance and this was the bridge that Mr. Benedict built to come across the Aurora. And over on this site was the original ranch house that was built in 1919 at, at a cost of about $1,400. So he lived there and then he you know took care of all of the construction on the other side of the aurora so this bridge was part then of his original construction it is it is including all the light fixtures everything is original and they have the road named after him too right? they do it goes through the housing area right to central avenue so this space is amazing um, I've noticed all the rich textures of all the materials that were used here. Can you tell us more about the rotunda? Yes. All of the materials were uh, brought in or they were made here on site. The building itself is uh, adobe with stucco overlay and then he had craftsmen on site that did the iron work. So you'll see the double staircases, um, the workmanship probably was uh, Mexican. Uh, and he, he was just so proud to reproduce things that he saw in Europe. You were telling me earlier about the painting on the ceiling of the rotunda. Yes, if you'll notice the design in the rotunda, if you look up carefully, it's an art deco, which of course falls right in line with when the building was uh, built in 1921 to 31. And from all records that we have, Mr. Benedict's son, stepson, did the painting with his artist friends from Hollywood. I can't believe that Mr. Benedict used this space as his living room. It's huge. Oh, it is. It's about 80 feet long, and um, this area back here was actually used as the living room, and where we're standing was the dining room. Originally, there was ironwork that matches all of the ironwork that you saw upstairs, and Mr. Benedict had this uh, home furnished beautifully. There were tapestries from Italy. Um, they had a lot of oriental porcelains, big couches for the day. They were over eight feet, uh, eight feet long, and uh, they were all custom made. So uh, he, he went to great detail in furnishing his home. Well, and it looks like from the beam ceilings that there's a lot of still original work here. There is. All of the painting that you see in the ceilings is original. We haven't touched it. Um, we've cleaned or dusted. The chandeliers are all original. We did have to touch those up because they were wearing. But uh, uh, the men took pride in polishing the brass and, and bringing it uh, and restoring it. So how would he have used this space? Because I can see that you've got old um, organs in the back of the room and then this stage up front. Yes. The organ, um, as you see, is the only original piece of furniture that was uh, left in the, on the property. And all of the uh, pipes and everything are housed up inside the walls. And all of the works are uh, upstairs and downstairs in a room. Um, amazingly enough, everything is original. The beeswax is still on, on the, um, the goods. So it's, it's really incredible to see. So I noticed several times throughout this space, there's uh, some what looks like lettering. 
Can you tell me what that says? Yes, it's Arabic and it's repeated three times, without God there is no victory. And we're very proud of this because it is original and it is repeated on this beam above us, on the side beam, and then of course the main beam uh, in the sanctuary. Aaron, come into Mr. Benedict's breakfast room. There are so many unique spaces in this building. I can't believe it. There tell are. me more about this one. This particular room was built for Mr. Benedict's breakfast room, but he also used it as his card room. Oh, I see. You uh, said that with a smile. Is there a story there? There is, because Mr. Benedict used to place himself strategically in this room, and he could hear what all of his guests were saying. So quite often he could hear them mumbling about their cards or discussing something that he really wanted to hear. Is there anything else about the room that makes it particularly special? There is, there is. This cabinet, um, the old cabinet or the original cabinet that was here had to be replaced. So they replaced it with an oak cabinet just so that we could show it on tour. And it opens up, you have to really pull it, and you can see the lines on the floor and there is a tunnel here and it goes down underground, and this is where Mr. Benedict used to keep his liquor during Prohibition. So it was kind of a secret and very safe place. So when I look at these arches, I can really start to see the Alhambra influences. Absolutely. Mr. Benedict was so enamored with the Alhambra that he replicated it, but in a much smaller way here. So you'll notice the uh, tile, uh, dome and the Moorish arches, and um, they are very much an influence from the Alhambra. So, uh, was this part built at the same time as the rest of the castle? No, this was built first, and then the rest of the castle um, followed. So, tell me more about this brickwork that we're walking on. Originally, this brickwork was not here, and there was a fountain in the middle, and there was a waterway that went straight down here. And when it evaporated and went into the breezes, it helped cool the building. This was uh, a way that uh, Mr. Benedict, he saw this originally at the Alhambra, and he replicated it here. So the fountain was actually a visual feature, but then it also had some side benefits. Well, actually, it was almost like a trough in the ground. Okay. Uh -huh. So it was flat and, uh, you know, not all that beautiful, but it certainly was serviceable. So tell me more about the uh, waterfall that's over here. This waterfall is one of the main features for uh, the patio area. The Servite Fathers built this when they took over the property. And of course they added the cross, or they added a grotto. We think that there was probably a, a statue of the Virgin Mary because it was the Servite Fathers who, uh, um, you know, have a blessing from the Virgin Mary. Okay, so we're almost to the top now. How yes. many steps is that? 480, Erin, so you've done a good job. And that explains why I'm out of breath. Watch your step here. Erin, I wanted to point out the roof tiles to you because a lot of them are original, but we have had to replace some. So we've taken great paints to match all of the different colors. And I would say the purple or black is probably the most difficult, but uh, our workers have done a very nice job in doing that. You can see it from up here. And from here also you can see the beautiful patio and the grounds. This is Erin Geddes, the City's Historic Preservation Officer, and I encourage you to get out in your neighborhood and explore Riverside's historic destinations.
Thank you.